Good evening. It's the Fort River School Building Committee. Today is Tuesday, uh, February 19th, uh, and uh, we're meeting in the uh, police station uh, community room, and this meeting will be broadcast by Amherst Media. Um, I'm going to call us to order. Through the door, and so maybe we're getting another person up. Okay. Um, and the first item on our agenda. Uh, other than that call to order is uh, approving minutes from last time. Does anyone have any edits to Anthony's minutes? Everyone okay with the chronological reordering I did of the <laughs> that was a That was a long, a complicated meeting to record. I, I was okay with it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm with the proof. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Great. I'm going to attempt to take the immediate minutes for today. Turn again. Um, so as I mentioned in an email, yeah. um, I need, we still need the updated minutes from last week to post. I need them from Allison. Oh, yes. I'm not sure. Okay. I, I've, e I've, I've emailed. Um, and also, we still don't have any minutes from 12-12. Yes, that's my fault. Those okay. are also my list to do. Okay. And they're mostly done, and every time I try to go to finish them, I get distracted. Last time, um, I'm going to do minutes to <coughs> public comment. <laughs> uh, so we obviously don't have TSKP today, um, but I think there's some stuff we can get through. Uh, the next item is uh, public outreach, um, and I think we should try to pin down at least a couple of dates that I can then give to TSKP. Uh, for uh, the final of the two big um, public events. Uh, and at one point we had talked about doing it on a, on a weekend, and I just wanted us to, to talk that through again. I know Mike, I think we did, or maybe we didn't. Maybe we talked about it, and in, in, in my head it sounded like it was a weekend, but I'm throwing it open to suggestions. I, I think we, we thought it within the working group, but Mike wasn't That's possible. what it was. That's right. Mike didn't want it. He was concerned about it conflicting with people's religious observance. Yes. And so that would mean doing another um, weekday events, potentially. <coughs> and when we had talked about it um, previously, how it was um, recorded in our outline for community outreach events, and it's been posted to the public for a long time, we said we were targeting weekday evenings. Yeah. OK. We have right. suggested to do one during the day, since the last time was, I think when we talked on the working group was, since we did the other one do at night, have one during the day in town. Do you folks have thoughts on day versus night? It's so easy for me to get there during the school day. I, I, think it, I think it makes sense to offer it at a different time, just because people to, to can even might be able to make it during the day. I, I think we had talked about doing a kind of a lunchtime-ish thing. Yes. The, the major issue is that we had talked, and we had started the variety thing next week, and announcements haven't been sent out. I'm concerned about yeah. doing it next week. I, I um, am too, because, you know, the, the, the logical day would be to do it, you know, maybe like the Wednesday of next week, which is 2.27. Um, although I think Richard is coming up to do Mike's Amherst Media event on the 26th, the day before. Um, but I am, I agree with you, I'm concerned about the ability to, to kind of advertise for that. Um, but the, the following Wednesday would be, uh, actually, that's March 6th. What's wrong with the 4th or 5th? Uh, if you want to have the SKP, the issue is if we want to have <coughs> them present I think it has to be maybe probably on the same day, not having come twice. Oh, you mean as a meeting we have? Yeah, if if we can do it, but if it has to be a different date, I, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to obviously give them some options and and and, and get them to kind of <coughs> chime in. But if I'm and more than anything, I'm trying to aim for a week that I can notify them about. Part part of my thing also is that since the sixth is one of the dates oh. for listening session That's for the yeah. process, um, it'd be ideal 
not to, to not the, pick the yeah. same day as one of those sessions. That makes sense. Um, it's yeah. also an early release day, which um, is going to complicate uh, parents' lives. Right. Yes. The sixth is out. <laughs> Um, I know there's a number of those SOI dates, and I'm trying to find them. Oh, I know where they are. They're oh, they're right. on, they're <laughs> on uh, the the 27th and 28th of February, and then March 6th with a um, <coughs> snow day of March 7th. Okay. Um, when we had talked about the segment listening session, we had talked about it as a way to um, address any questions that arose out of the first one. And I just wanted to make sure that we have that in mind as uh, we're framing, that's the way we framed it. Mm -hmm. So um, by moving the time, I mean, I kind of like the idea of drawing a different audience, but at the same time, that's not really how we built it previously. So I just want to make sure that we're thinking about that. I don't think we'll ever get quite the exact same audience. Right. Um, but I, I think you, you raise a valid point that I, I think we want to make sure that we've had a chance to talk with TSKP and if there are things that we want to adjust and kind of have, have kind of incorporated that they get incorporated or in it. I think the things could be other meetings are recorded, so if they address things, people that cannot make it, they can still leave the watch it. So I'm not I prefer changing the time so we can catch up a bigger audience and if there are things that they want to change on the presentation or do a cookie cutter presentation of the previous one. If they want to change something based on mm -hmm. the meeting they can do it. But everything is recorded, so there's no problem. To so, the next time we're going to see TSKP, I believe, is the 27th. We, we don't know that, do we? We don't have our next meeting. There's no next meeting scheduled. Okay, so we probably need to, to establish that. I, I will target a couple of weeks. I'm going to target the week of the 6th and the week of the 3rd, or the week of the 4th and the week of the 11th with TSKP and see what. So, the week of the 11th is when the universities are out. <coughs> The spring break already. Yes. Well. That's what we can send next week. <laughs> yes. Since um, <laughs> when are you when are you talking to them next? Uh, the next time I write them an email, I mean, I, I can probably do that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a schedule. Whenever time. you do. Yes. I mean, I think to me the practicality of when we push this on the calendar is partially a matter of their availability on the 4th, 5th, or 6th, or whatever. Yeah. And then it's also a matter of the entire point of this is to get feedback that could be incorporated in some way yep. in how they prepare or draft or answer questions in the report. Yep. So at some point, we don't want to be doing that <coughs> if we're hoping we've moved on from that process. You know what I mean? Yep. But that's something they can answer for us. OK. Well, it sounds like we're not going to necessarily pin something down tonight, but I think I've got enough input to have conversation with them. Can we agree that tentatively we think, so that we don't have to come to another meeting and vote to another meeting, that let's, unless we hear otherwise, we're going to target the force of the thief unknown as a pure education, if they are able to do it, and try to figure out this, if possible, before the end of the week, so that we can send announcements to to channels to try to get the dance notice as much as possible before the date. Yep. Nothing more. Sorry. Is there just something? Yeah. Right but I I just um, in terms of advertising, we had snafus with, uh, in terms of the Gazette that yep. they received press releases two weeks in a row and somehow nothing ended up there. So. Um, I also want to make sure that when we do this, we uh, have some assurance from them that... I'm not sure how we get assurance from them. I, I think we might have to just go up the food chain and tell them. I mean, just to say to the editor-in-chief, like, guys, you know, no announcements were made the last two times. We really expect there to be an announcement prior to this next one. I can... Yeah, or try to at least. I just wanted to, I mean, it sort of asked a question. I just wanted to, I'm acting like I'm chair. I wanted okay. to actually ask you to ask the group whether everyone actually agrees with what, I'm not, I'm not okay. saying I disagree with it, I'm just saying I want to make sure people affirmatively yep. assent as opposed to silently just sit here and then the next thing I want to make a decision. Do people agree uh, with the approach of, of me reaching out to TSKP? 
uh, in hopes of finding a noon time, either the third or fourth, fourth or fifth, fourth or fifth of March, uh, for our final large group uh, event. And if that doesn't work, going to the next. And if yeah, you'll, that doesn't work, get then we'll have to go. Fall back. Yeah, work with and them. It won't be back. ideal, but. Is that all right? Okay. I don't, I'm not going to make any date on things. Well, I don't mean you're going to do it. It's just more of a. <laughs> Yes, and but I'll also talk to Richard about you know the exactness of that. But I don't see any reason why they couldn't make new. They should be. Okay, so that is our um, uh, next community events, uh, and then I have uh, another bullet point here for discuss other outreach, uh, mostly just to see if there's a discussion about other outreach. We don't necessarily have to happen. I think you were contacted by this one for I, Geo. Yes, and Maria and Heather and I were there last Friday. That was Friday, right? That yeah. was Crocker Farm. Crocker Farm. I, I, mean, I feel like well, this is a good time to, yeah. to, this is the community outreach outline that I updated on um, February 6th in email to the committee. Yep. Um, and so this is, I mean, at this point, you know, this is turning turning from something as an aspirational thing that we would be updating along the way and now becoming morphing into the record of what we have done. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I think would be very helpful to include in our final report um, because the school committee charged us explicitly with not only engaging in this process but engaging in a community outreach process. And this is the record of what we did in that regard. Um, so I think it deserves a little attention from the committee to make sure that what we have done is actually recorded accurately in here. Mm -hmm. um, I know for a fact there's, there's some things missing. Um, um, but then also when we're talking about the like, PGO events, um, like they're not listed on here. The interview with um, uh, Byline. Yeah, Byline. And since I wasn't involved in like the Byline stuff, if somebody would be willing to provide me a summary of how that came to be and what happened, that would be nice. Um, and um, PGO stuff, I could probably take a crack at that. And then, so is there a PGO event scheduled yet with Wildwood? What's the Not yet. Uh, and do we need they, to reach out to them? So they, I've been reached out to, I said this week doesn't really work <laughs> um, for a couple of reasons, uh, not the least of which was school vacation week. Um, and I believe I proposed some dates for next week or the following week, but I haven't heard back. That's at least my memory for it stands. So you've been already to for River and yeah, Carter Carter so what would be the last week. And we do have PDOs at the high school and middle school. Do we I mean that was our this is already beyond um, what we had suggested as yeah. part of our um, outreach at the beginning of this and that we had you know available to public comment. I mean from my perspective I think sort of done pretty good diligence on, on public outreach. Um, that will be two recorded videos, three PGOs, two public forums, and then open meetings every time we've had one. So does anyone else feel like we need to do more? I just think it's worth noting the press releases that didn't get released. That we've done up diligence. Paper, yeah. 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 Yeah, we should make a note mm -hmm. that as far as I know, only one press release generated a story. Right. Is not that for, right? Not for lack of trying. That's but even yeah. true. Yeah. No, none of them. Sorry. <laughs> At least the very first one. No. Or that was a free press release? It morphed into a letter to the editor, and that got published. <coughs> they yeah. did do that? Okay. That was like ages ago. Like, you know, that was our... Like October 17th kind of thing? Does anyone remember? No, that first one. I think that was like, the first one that we did, and that's, I think that's the, the only one they tried. Yeah, fine. I'll try to figure that out and make a note of it. I know this, um, but but the but some of them got picked up in, like, I mean it was also picked up in the superintendent's newsletter, mm -hmm. right? Yes, and they the they PGOs they, carried it. Um, it was uh, there was a couple of updates in the Fort River newsletters. So here we're we're, yeah. we've been pushing it to ask the PGOs to release them, but for outside the school system we asked the Gazette several times, and for the last one we asked them several times. 
this is the, the paper. The paper yeah. uh, we sent it several times, even to put it on the events, on the listing of events, not an article just listed with other events happening in town, and there was zero response. So if anybody can ask them why. I, I've got the name of the person <laughs> who reached out to me and said she was going to call me on Monday, which was like two Mondays ago now. And I'll call her again and say, let's figure this out. But otherwise, this for the night, as Maria says, yeah. might have to go further with the chain. So, <laughs> Eric. From, to answer Heather's question, from, from my perspective, if we, once we do the other PGO, yeah. then we do another community session, I think we have done mm -hmm. the right amount of outreach. I think the, right, I think the next thing we need to do is um, help the design team get this thing done. Right? Mm -hmm. And then we obviously then have to get back out at the end right. and release the thing and discuss it. Right. Um, Eric, can you give us some sort of idea about what we need to do and when we could do it to get to back to the school committee to do our final presentation to them? Um, I mean, I haven't discussed this with Anastasia. My assumption, who's the chair, obviously, of the MS committee, my assumption had been at the point the report was. Uh, I mean, there's two ways to go. One way would be would be to have the report almost entirely finished and then present it for feedback if we thought that feedback would be helpful in some way. Um, I think otherwise, I was I assumed we would get a review a final draft of our own. And at the point we felt that the designer was at the point that the draft was complete, um, we could work to schedule a mutually convenient time at the school committee and. Um, Design team to be able to yeah, I just present. know that your I mean your agendas are very full, and right. I'm just wondering, do we, should we try to anticipate and book it now and have a deadline? In other words, give ourselves. Yeah. And oh, I think it'd be awesome if we could do that. I, mean, uh, I, think that'd be, I think that's another question right. for the, you know, the design team. Yeah, I think if we could start working that way. Also, I think it's just healthy too. But if you never know when you're going to be done, then you might. I, I mean this facetiously. But if you never know when you're going to be done, then you might never finish, right? <laughs> if you know when you're done, then you can actually put some affirmative pressure. To, well, could you? Could I ask you to do one thing, which would be? You can ask me to do two things. Well, I can ask you to do all kinds of things. Not do them or do them. But <laughs> um, could you talk to your compatriots on the school committee about yes. whether they want us to present this kind of as done or at that almost done stage? That that would be helpful, and that way I can. For that information. To very, happy to, very happy to do that. And then um, I'll also ask, I'll also actually ask if there are, because between Anastasia and Mike, they will know if there are Amherst School Committee meetings coming up at some point that are likely to be lighter or heavier. Mm -hmm. and I can start mapping that because it's only both those things. No, I was going to suggest that they also look for dates already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. which is what I've learned then. Yeah. Exactly right. I'm making notes and letting my head kind of absorb things at the same time. Um, so I think I, I, I at least heard a couple voices, and certainly I would add my own to that. I think we've done a, as good a job as we can in, in outreach. And it's, while I'm disappointed by the, the lack of coverage in the paper, um, I, I tend to think I don't think we need to add any more things to our calendar other uh, than nice. the right level of stuff to pass on to school committee. And it's just well beyond our control to tell the paper what to print. Yeah, I mean, I don't, and I don't mind being a squeaky wheel. I can do that. It's easy enough to write an email and, if necessary, make make a phone call. And you either get people to do something or you don't. You know, it's just the way it is. Um, other items under outreach, or should we move on? Or, do we, do we, Rudy, uh, do we need to plan to talk to the town council um, around the time the school committee presentation? Or not? I don't know the answer to that. Um, we're not obligated to as part of our charge, yeah. and I just don't know if they, they would want us to come and speak to them. Do you want me? Do you want me to reach out on that? You can't yeah. hurt. Sorry. I I think we should actually. I mean, there were uh, at the last um, maybe not the our last meeting, but at yeah. we did go. They had um, questions about what what we've been up to. Um, and um, I think that it would be valuable. 
so I would, I would like to do it. It's up to them. Yeah, reach out and find out that if they want to support to formally come and talk to them. Okay. One other thing, and maybe we'll come back to this, but um, should we schedule a meeting for us um, to meet with TSKP before that March sixth week? Basically that would be good. I mean, I, I would like, like if we can if we're manage to meet it. Yeah. Avoiding the twenty sixth and twenty seventh. I don't know how people were feeling, but that whole backwards design idea that came up a minute ago was something that sounded really great. Like, What's our end point, and what do yeah. we do backwards? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe can you ask if they are coming up on, on the 26th, whether we, we can do another Tuesday meeting. If they are coming, if they're coming in the morning, then that right. makes sense. But if they are coming in the afternoon, I don't know how people are available on the 26th. Well, let's send around a poll or show do a show of hands, but. Okay, but I, I just love to know, like, what are our objectives in that meeting? Like, well, I would say what we would like to do with the next meeting, um, I've been thinking a little bit about this, and really the next series of meetings, is one we do need to formally recap with them the, the takeaways from the, the big event last week. Um, but we also have to work our way through formally the, the uh, geotechnical report, the survey, um, and the existing building reports. We've received all those items, we've never formally gone through them. It may be overly ambitious for a single meeting, uh, but I think we need to get through those things before they can go off and do their, their bit. Eric? I agree with that, but I actually think before, I actually think before we did that, we actually should get a, some sort of presentation from TSKP about what they see as the schedule. That they right. see is the where they are with the feedback they've gotten from me. And I'm not trying to be facetious, but my guess is, for example, um, without having talked to them, is they've probably gotten all the feedback they need on the, the financial modeling. Um, we know they haven't gotten any feedback on the engineering right. or the geotech because we've never even discussed it. But then beyond that, from a production purpose, they might have, they might, I assume they already have a set of questions or things that they need to work through from us in order to be able to know they're in the right place with what they're doing with their draft. Right. And so I'd really, I would love to see an outline from them of what, the, what they think the realistic end date can be and what do they need from us in each meeting. And then, I mean, not, that's not funny about this, but also because, I mean, and I'm not saying it isn't valuable time, but since we spent a mm -hmm. really long time going through the financial stuff, the cost modeling, I think it's important for us as a committee to know if their view is, we, we need to go over the engineering and geotech, but we need to do it in no more than a meeting and a half, let's say, then that means it creates a normative bias on how we're conducting our meeting to make sure we can meet that goal. Whatever. Go for it and then for it. Yeah, I think that um, I don't know that we're done with the financial, and we still haven't done that, that last bit, the operational costs, the carbon emissions, you know. So I think there, there are still outstanding issues there to talk about. Um, it would be nice if we could um, also address, some, some folks have written um, to us by email, and um, it would be good if we could address those, and, and maybe, uh, I don't know, I don't know if TSKP gets our emails. I try to pass on everything so they have what we have. But it might, I mean, we might yeah. kind of start, we, develop a punch list of like, yeah. you know, let's make sure we hit all of that. Um, I'm wondering, Anthony, do you know, uh, some of the, the stuff that we've gotten, you would only know about the survey one, it, it said draft, and it was basically maps. I mean, is there a written report that's forthcoming as well, or? Go oh, for the survey? For the survey. The, uh, the survey is, is uh, was probably marked draft because they sent it to us. I hurried them up, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Um, and but they probably wanted to make sure they crossed all their I's and dotted all their T's, as it were. Um, but I don't expect we're going to get like a book. That that, that document is, is sort of what I expected. So just maps? Yeah. Okay. I think one of the things we need to go over is the narrative. Um, for the cost estimator, I think um, it needs to be adjusted. It wasn't clear on the 
in which options the weather boilers were staying, in which ones they were not staying, the site scope. I think we need to go over with them yeah. to make sure that the narrative, if we're going to send for a, this is the next item, right. uh, independent cost estimator, we need to, all the changes that were done to the narrative, they have to be changes, and I think we should discuss them to make sure that we are <coughs> in sync with those things. Sure. So I just, I mean, I, I don't agree, I don't disagree with anything that you just said, but I, I, th I think we're never, we're never going to get to the end mm -hmm. unless they're driving the bus somewhat in terms of telling us. You know, we have a lot of input to give them, right. feedback to give them, but we need to know what they need to get done to get done, right? And we need to know what's, what's most useful out of our meetings to give them what they need um, to get done. And I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with any of the feedback. I'm just simply saying that I'm worried. For weeks now or months now, they haven't really been telling us in our meetings how what we're doing fits with or slots in with the overall work program they have and what else they need to get from us to get it done and what their production schedule looks like given other projects they're working on. And I'm not trying to cavity probe everything else they're working on, but what I'm saying is so I don't always know whether what we're doing in this meeting is always the most effective use of our time to get them to a point where we're getting to a good product. And so what, what I, I, I'm urging, unless the committee violently disagrees with me, I'm urging you to get from them a stronger frame of what they need to get done and what they need from us. Partially so that then when we do give them feedback on other items, we can feel confident that it's slotted in effectively into a moving program of work. Right. Well, I think I, I like the idea of them coming to the next meeting with a, with a clear agenda for, for us about timeline what, framework of meetings. And I can give I think I can give them uh, some feedback based on this evening's discussions and get them to do that. So this is awesome. from a way back. Did we get a meeting report from the <coughs> public outreach event? How are we recording? How did we Russian. record that? I have a, a list of handwritten notes. If folks want to send them to me um, in some form, any form, I will compile them. And I feel like that goes back to the question of yeah. what the second meeting looks like, what our discussion leading into that second right. meeting looks like. Um, and then to follow on what you said, I think we definitely need to have TSKB helping us wrap this thing up because um, they're writing the report. Um, but I think it would also be helpful if the committee basically just listed the questions very individually about like as individual members of the committee have we had our kind of questions answered and then let them slot that into or we have answered that question right um, so I have a list of those yeah I and mean, that's not a, not a I don't have to email those to the chair to and me and I will consolidate them, them consolidate them as I did with other comments and send them all on to them um, and say okay these are the, the things that the, the committee is still thinking about um, we know you need a certain amount of direction and, and we need to do certain things like go over the survey just out of due diligence. Here you go. Tell us, tell us the right order to do this stuff in to be the most efficient. So we should just go ahead and email those questions to you, right? Feel, feel free. Okay. I'm going to be in and out over the next couple of days, so if I don't respond to you quickly, just, well, remember it's a communication meeting. <laughs> when, when do you want to see it? Uh, by by mm, Monday, it would be really great. Yeah, right. just so that people have time to write them and I have time to send them out. I think that actually makes enormous sense. Yeah. So that way, you know, whether it's the operating costs or I've already lost the thread, but the different pieces that people have pulled out already tonight, let's get them into their hands and make a big list. Yeah. What's the due date? Are these uh, what's, to you? It would be really great if folks could get it to me by. I turn on my thing, whatever Monday is. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's the 20, I should know, it's 20, the 25th. 25th? Okay. So by the 20th. beginning of the day, on the 25th? End of the day. I just say end of the day. Of the day. Okay. 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 Well, oh, I want a kid in school, so I. <laughs> oh, oh so you yeah. till then. End, of, end of the day is fine. Oh, okay. This is a self imposed deadline. Okay. Yes. So is, are these questions for that they're going to be 
we want them to answer on the 20 if they if they not, do not have necessarily a but, but figure out how for them to make sure they address it in some way over the next few meetings some they might choose to address at the next meeting some they may choose to address the and but they're, they're threads we don't want to lose. Or they'll work it into yes. their schedule right. so that when they give us a schedule, it'll have incorporated the idea that they already have at least some, maybe not 100%, but maybe 75 or 80% of the questions we have yeah. follow up. But my only concern is that they receive like 20 questions. Uh, we need to order also to prioritize us up with our timeline, for example. The narrative, if I think. Well, no, I, well. We could I'm do that, but I, I kind of like Eric's idea, make them prioritize yeah. it. I know, but at the same time, but they might consider narrative something down the line, but we want the consent to make as much the timeline. We need also. I, I can, I can, I think I can safely say that we have a separate process we have to go through with that. The narratives, anything that might happen there, they need to, to clean up super rapidly. But that's, that's really a different process. They can do that to me, they can do that offline. And send us an email that says, "Okay, here's the updated uh, uh, piece for a cost estimator to look at." I don't think I don't think they necessarily have to do that in the meeting as long as we get our answers, questions, our questions answered. Uh, what was that? That was the 25th, right? I guess the 25th. We determined. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> and ask them a question and see if they, they're available. Um, and then we have to send out our, our own kind of poll to check on the availability of people that aren't here tonight. Or kind of like, um, <coughs> yeah. The evening is going to work better for me, but. Okay. And then um, while we're at it, um, I'm wondering if I should just send out another one for, for future meetings as well. Yeah. Um, I'd love to back after to, that. Yeah. to the Wednesday. Yeah. Format, um, which would be, well, I mean, theoretically, I guess, I know it's when people are at its college spring break, but the 13th, or do we want to go on either side of that? I, I, I personally, I'd say send out a poll of the 13th, see what you get for responses. Right. I mean, it doesn't look promising that we'll apply to the 20th, but. Um, just in the, again in the interest of okay. so that would be the, the pace. Okay. So I'm sorry, we're talking about the twenty sixth. Oh, you're gonna send out something for the whatever time. The whole everyone. day of um, okay. February twenty sixth and then um, okay. a check on our usual time on the thirteenth. Okay, thanks. I don't know if it matters, but there's a school committee meeting the twenty sixth that We'll have some presentations going on, so I don't know if that matters with folks. I'll be busy, Mike. I'll be busy. Yeah. Well, let's let's see what we can get for quorum. <coughs> if we don't get quorum, we'll have to but. Um, before we move on for, I mean, we sort of mention the, the word snafu about advertising for the last public forum. I, I, I'm not clear, like, if I have any role in advertising. Do we know how we're approaching it, who's doing what for advertising for the next public forum? Because it sounds like yeah. we're going to set the date and we're not really going to have time to assign roles before we need to be making those actionable. Um, Unless folks have an objection, I think what I would do is, is kind of repeat the process and hope for a better outcome. Um, which would be to, to, to update the, the uh, version of the press release we have now with new dates and have Deb Westmoreland submit it. So I've enabled that I, I would just say on that note, um, when we have a date established, I think we cannot, we should authorize now the people to update the press release, update the flyer, and distribute as we do, as we've been to, immediately, basically. Just, Take, take the same actions. I don't know if there's any new actions available to us, but I'm authorize sure. everyone to take the same old ones and, and do it again. I think 
post it again on Town Meeting on the Town website. Ask the RPS to post it. Everybody that has access to a PGO reinforce to the link to the PGOs uh, because it gets sent through Central, but somebody else can send it asking if it has a direct contact to the PGO. <coughs> it's doing. Um, so last time that's what everybody would that we ask. Everyone comfortable with that approach? Uh, good for the press release. If you could put public forum in the first sentence rather than the fifth, that would be nice. Okay. item I have is uh, review or discuss review procuring an independent cost estimate. That was one of our charges, I believe, um, <coughs> and I suspect we're getting close to a point where we could do that. Um, and that would be another sort of solicitation that we'd have to send out. Um, so we need to get the name. We need to get the names of cost estimators to, to do that with. Did. I might be jumping ahead a little bit. Did we allocate once upon a time a cost to that? We did. Um, in yeah. Christine's original budget, she had seven thousand five hundred dollars for an independent cost estimate. I don't. Uh, I don't have the experience to tell you whether that's a good figure or not. But we have. We have other money that we haven't tapped that might be all there. Uh, and that's about right. Yeah. Um, so does everyone have a scope? <coughs> I, it's a two-pager, two-sided scope. Um, this is something that I drew up from Heather. Do you need one? I think so. I have to right here. Left, 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 left. No, I got it. You got it. Okay. Um, this is just something I drew up. Um, obviously, still some missing parts, especially around qualifications. Um, I mean, I, I guess the first question is do we actually need to do this? Um, it is part of our charge from the town meeting warrant to do an independent cost estimate. TSKP's cost estimators are an independent company, but they do work for them, not for us. So I guess just want to make sure that everyone is on board with us doing this, so we will have two cost estimates to, to compare against each other. I guess everyone is on, on board with that. Okay. Um, well, I guess I just want to voice a few. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We spent an inordinate amount of time on the first cost yeah. estimate, and I just want the committee to be aware that we do owe the community some information sooner rather than later and and I'm, I'm afraid <laughs> in yeah. that regard because they, they will not be perfectly aligned I mean that's that's sort of the reason you might do a second round I, I guess I would be open to trying to find out whether what we've done to date meets the intent but I don't know how to do that um, it says independent, and they, they are independent, but you're right, they work for, for TSKP. Um, you know, I, I don't think that's necessarily a, a, a bad thing. Um, but I guess one way to, to think about it would be to go back to our touchstone of, of you know, using the MSPA process as a, as a, as a model, and do, does that process, for, you know, have a, sep a separate estimate that's different than the architect's estimate? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, it's an independent cost estimate in the MSBI. I don't remember if you end up with two. I, I, I'd have to look out. I don't remember if you end up with two cost estimates in the MSBI process. You're not. Yes. You did? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. But if in that, that, <coughs> under that process, if they're the architect and they're the architect for the final project, then it makes sense you'd want to hold them to account because they're sort of driving the bus on a major multi-million dollar construction project. In this case, there isn't really the same challenge. I mean, you want to get the number right. right. But my point is it's not like, it's not like, oh, well, they're the architect, they're managing the project, they're, you know, it's not, I don't think, but I'm happy to do whatever. There is a re reconcil reconciliation process you have to go through. Exactly. And that's, 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 the, that's the challenge. I was going to say, if we would feel comfortable, I don't know how important the reconciliation process is in this particular scenario. Like, other, I feel like, oh, go ahead. Well, the other difference that, that, that using that MSBA model 
is that there would be an owner's project manager who would help vet that. Mm -hmm. We don't have that advice at the mm -hmm. table. But Diane, my only thought is I understand yeah. that we're following the MSBA process, but this is not an MSBA right. project. And if we do end up getting an MSBA pipeline, which we're not close to, the MSBA process would actually cover the cost of that as well. That is true, yes. So we're spending money we don't necessarily need to spend. But, uh, yeah, I feel the same way. I'll go, I'll go with the group, but um, I would like to find out whether this is something we absolutely need to do. Because I feel like if we're going to spend the money on getting an independent cost estimate, we're also going to have to commit to spending the time to go through and do our own reconciliation, figure out why are these numbers different, or there's no real value in doing it just to get it done. Um, and so if we could find out whether what we've done would satisfy the charge, charge. of the commission, I'd say let's not do it. I agree. Okay. So I think the problem is that if we do get, if it did happen and the numbers were significantly different, then you'd have to say you actually would want to know why. and. That, that would be important information to have. Can I ask, um, Anthony, do you have any sense of the time frame in terms of sending, if we, if we sent this out, um, getting somebody on board, getting a contract, and getting it done? What, what are we talking about? Uh, I do not have that sense. Actually, fi finding an actual procurement just for an independent cost estimate was actually very challenging, and I had to go outside the state to do it because I don't think it's done off and on, just on its own. So I don't, I'd, I'd, I'd ask any of the architects on the committee if they had an idea. I don't know how long the procurement part would take, um, but once you had someone in hand, uh, given the scope, uh, I would expect it to take uh, three weeks for them to actually turn around and estimate, maybe four, um, before we would even have a product that we could look at. So we would give it to them, and then a month later we'd have a result. And the other thing, you know, that we'd have to anticipate is that TSKP would have to interact with this cost and estimator at a certain level. It's, it's not as though it's just going to be this kind of thing that you put in a black box and get a number back out because it, even if they make the corrections that we've kind of noted that they need to make, there's still going to be some question about the scope. The only way they're going to get answered is to call the architect and then have them communicate. Irina? I wouldn't be worried about the part because this case has known from the beginning that we were having independent Right, yeah, I'm not worried so about that. that. Yeah, that no. part, I think it's right. part. And I think, consider that things, several things have changed along the way from the time they did the cost estimator. Um, they did, they were, the geotech came in and they said, oh, we hadn't, we were talking the other day in the presentation, we had all the cost estimated to include files, but then we don't need the files based on the geotech. And the, there are several other things or they included the boilers, but actually we don't think that we need the boilers. Um, some of those things, I think we might want another one, cost estimator, because we, we, well, we hammered them quite a bit on size and more on the details. So I think these are the number we most likely must need. Well, the, I, I guarantee you they will not be perfect. But, but, no, but uh, I think yeah. to which extent we will be comfortable with a 10% difference. They say, okay, 10% is or 5%, or at which point we trigger, like, we have to compare it number by number. Um. Um, forgive my ignorance. Is an independent cost estimator that we hire going to take the basic set of facts from TSKP? and derive their own analysis of the costs? That's correct. Or is, so they're not going to critique? They're not going to look at what the other estimator did? No, they're, they're typically they're, they're doing it with that, you know, with the, with the page turned over. You know, you get the documents, the same set of documents, okay. um, and when they have a question, they'll have, I mean, they'll have to, to, to contact TSKP um, because this is a complicated, you know, kind of thing with many moving parts, and so it's kind of hard for me to imagine that there would not be some how interaction. How much do they think this is going to cost? Uh, we had it allocated a little over seven thousand. Seven thousand. We had seven thousand five hundred originally. I have yeah. no notion of. Yeah. I mean, that's that intuitively, in my experience, feels about right for something this complicated. It wouldn't surprise me if we got some solicitations that were closer to ten. Um, but that's just me being a little pessimistic. So who would who would you talk to, Paul Bachman? About 
about whether, the, we, about do, whether we do this or not. I would, I I mean, would probably start with the town attorney. Yeah. and So um, A, do we have to do it, and then B, because I mean, to me, what's weird about this group, I don't mean it's critical, but I just mean it's like a genuinely weird feature of this group, is it's kind of a headless horseman. It doesn't really have, with all forgiveness, and it doesn't really have any, it doesn't really, it's not accountable to anyone. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, so we spend the money or we don't spend the money, and it's not really clear to me whether there's anyone who should be giving us advice on whether that's a good idea to do or not. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, it's sometimes wise, even if we're making our own decision, it's not a bad idea to get input. To take counsel, yes. Take counsel. Okay, uh, I'm not sure who had that hand up first. Rudy, and then Rudy. Um, I, I've been on the fence about the utility of this a little bit, but on the other hand, <laughs> Here's the reason to do it is one of the two things that's probably going to get thrown about as a conclusion for the study is the cost. What we said was the cost of doing this, including the PV and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and the site's usability for the school. And so even though I worry this is throwing money out the window of this site and this configuration of project is never used, on the other hand, I suspect that the numbers that come out of this are going to get referred to by people. And I, I've had my doubts about a few of the numbers. So maybe it's worth 7500 to get a second opinion. And even if we presented a range in the final report, it, 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 you know, I, I'm not sure we have to go through it. Maybe we do. Once we yeah. get it, we have to reconcile them. But at least people would know there's a doubt and here's the range of two different firms. I think everybody had her. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I think one of the things are if they say we don't respond to anyone, I think we make the decisions and I think originally we said we were going to do it. So if we won't do it, we have to give a very strong reason because it has been from the beginning we said we're going to do an independent cost estimation. So if we don't do it, we have to give some very some reason because I think it's from that I'm thinking from that side. Some people might come and say, "Why didn't you give you a second opinion?" Uh, that's my only. Yes, it's money. We might not need it, but since we said it at the beginning, if we don't do it, we have to say why. I mean, Eric's question is in when I go to Paul Bachelman is an interesting one because um, we. We're created by town meeting, but we were appointed by the school committee, yes. who then kind of uh, let us free. That's exactly. Uh, so there you go. I, don't, I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, Paul, I mean, it would be interesting to get Paul's opinion, but yeah. I don't think I would go to him for a, a, a decision because I don't think not, it's a decision. We're not, I think yeah, it's, we're not I think on, it's yeah. an interpretation. What I would say is this yeah. is we're going we're gonna to ask for an opinion, and then this group's going to have to have another. We don't have to decide tonight, and we're not going to decide tonight. Yeah. I mean, okay. I mean, I'd go, I mean, yeah. I'd go to the KP, to the attorney. Yeah. I go to KP, and, and maybe, but I don't know. I kind of feel like we're reluctantly going towards doing it right now. But it's um, so. but um, and 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 I personally am, am in favor of doing it. It's in the town meeting charge. Yeah. As Rudy said, the cost is going to be one of the big takeaways here. So defending it, would it and. I have no idea what the reconciliation process looks like. If they come in pretty close, then maybe we just let it stand and we don't really have to worry about it. Right. Big. And if they're wildly different, then uh, there's a mess. different yeah. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Maria, and then Eric. So um, I'm I'm leaning towards doing it as well um, for a lot of the same reasons. I think that we could make this less complicated and less costly to do if we maybe don't have them do all hundred plus numbers. Um, so if we could um, pick an enrollment, maybe, from <laughs> maybe yeah. and F. That's probably yeah. a logical thing um, to do. Yeah. And, yes. And I yeah. think that, and then if they're wildly off, well then you assume the others would be wildly, wildly off. off. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I, I think that's a fair, that very fair assumption, yes. Yeah. I was going to say something when we got to the actual specs, I was going to say yeah. Yeah. Okay. so. Um, so it sounds. I mean, it sounds like the group is well. Eric, yeah, yeah, so I just wanted to wrap the conversation yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think like, I figured since I was, I was as much leading. I wouldn't say objection, just questioning. Uh, I mean, one, if it's in the charge and these guys are a sub, the current cost estimators are a sub to the designer. Then the idea that we should actually have an independent cost estimator 
and it's in the charge, then we should just do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, the only other thing I'd say, though, is this is why there's an urgency on the previous thing we talked about, about getting a production schedule yep. mm -hmm. and a meeting schedule. Because I'm not personally going to quit the committee if we spend seven meetings, six or seven meetings, or whatever it is, analyzing every single line item of the cost estimation. I'm going to walk out because it's, I mean, because I don't think it, well, let me put it this way. If the estimation is that different, then it suggests our first estimator was incompetent. Yeah, we, we, have, another, real we have another problem right. entirely. Right. Um, but I mean, it's, it would just be, what I'm worried about, and what I, you said this earlier, what I'm worried about is if we, and I'm, this is why I want to hear from the designers on their schedule, what I'm worried about is if we have a report that's a little similar to the presentation the other day, in which the discussion's about how, don't worry, the site's feasible, Let's talk about what options you could build. Um, that's a really bad, and then here are the numbers, but we've really kicked the tires on our numbers. That's a really bad report because there's so many people in town who want to know what a net zero building looks like and how you'd ever get there. And there's so many people who think the site's wet and want not just an answer of, hey, look, it's buildable. They want you to walk them through what we learned from the geotech, walk them through but the stuff actually they talked about the other day. But by the way, one of the things that wasn't in the company, the other day when we listened to the guys, TSKB, they said another thing that's not in the cost estimation is they said, after looking at the geotech, that they might choose to remediate the existing building by plugging into the ground right. and you know, shooting stuff into the ground to solidify it. Um, that wasn't in the cost estimation either, right? No. So some of the costs go up, some of the costs go down. The, but but my, my point is, even beyond the costs, if we want to have a public that's better educated about the site, they need a report in the end that actually walks them through those different things. Yeah, and like how much it costs for those things. And then how yeah. much it costs for those things. But, but also literally what the process is. What did we learn about the site? What did we learn about the building? Yes, it's buildable, but here's how it's buildable. Um, and then, then, then we get into the cost. I want to make sure they're doing that. Because if in the end the report doesn't include those things, it's not going to be a successful report, right. even if the final numbers are like really well vetted. Right, because we'll, 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 we won't actually get there because we'll send them back to do more work if, if that's the, the draft well, that's we not, get. That's, but yes. Maybe, but my, yeah. anyways, I'm sort of belabored that, but I just, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a really big deal thing. Right. So do we need, uh, I don't, do we need a motion to decide that we are going to go to do a cost estimator or are we just, I, I don't think the product is ready to send out yeah. to the to cost estimator. Yeah. I think we've had a, a good introductory discussion tonight. Yeah. I suspect we're we're bound to do it by the by the okay. rules. Um, you know, I don't think you know from what you just said. I'm not sure the town council is necessarily so, going to dissuade so us. They're going to go with on? a conservative approach and yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> <move on>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we can. So it sounds like we we're doing it. Um, yep. So. Like I said, these are draft, there's stuff that I still want to add. Mm -hmm. I guess the big questions to answer, maybe not tonight, are at what point do we target to go out? At what point is at what point is the material that we're giving to them ready, ready to yeah. ready to get a second set of eyes on it? It's, it's not right now because as we discussed, there's stuff that's not in the pop current cost estimate. Um, secondly, uh, is the procurement method. It was in my assumption that we would solicit quotes. If it's under 10, we do not have to. If there was a recommend, if there was a firm that someone felt comfortable with, there's nobody that the town currently works with this sort of thing. So I, I, I would be soliciting. But if we don't have, we don't have to. If time is, I, if time is a concern, if we had someone we were comfortable hiring, that's an option. Un under 10,000. Can I ask about the process? Do we need when we do the solicitation? If we go for a solicitation, do you have to give them the whole narrative at that point, or just do the solicitation just to gain time? So we we can work, can we work in parallel? Can we do the solicitation, and by the way, we're gonna give you the documents in two weeks, or you have to say these are the these are the documents that you don't have to look at. I don't have to give them the documents. I think it would not be prudent not to. They need to um, see what they're, what they're yeah. Now. Yeah. Okay. I, if I just said we've get, we'll we'll give you. Especially, this is kind of an unknown. This isn't something that's done frequently, and they're not going to know what they're up against as far as what we're providing them. So I, also any, I mean, also anyone that was willing to do their homework would find it posted on our website anyway. And I'm 
but that's, wanted, that, yeah. that's why I'm saying people can find it by companies. <coughs> I don't know where where this is kind of maybe not work that people are going to be scrambling for. I, I maybe don't want to. Yeah. I, want, I, I want to make it easier for people yeah. to quote on this rather than harder. Right. Can you what documents exactly do you need? That was also going to be a question, although I kind of figured for later. I, I figured they're going to need they're going to need whatever TSK's piece cost estimator had. Yeah, that's they just ask what them. They want. Yeah, and we'll ask them the yeah. pricing, right. the pricing yeah. narrative, which is right. an important thing for us to make sure that. I mean, I think we need we need to have a solid grasp of that and and agreement that yes, this committee approves that pricing narrative. Ready to move on? No, not oh. that. that, that <laughs> yes, that too. But no, the um, whatever TSKP gave their cost estimator yeah. price is what we need to give yeah. this cost estimator. Yeah. And if there are things that need to be reviewed by the committee, that's fine. Right. My point is, that's the set. Right. Find out from them what the set is. That's the set. And any revisions they make. Yeah, and if they're review or if the revisions need to be reviewed by us, that's fine. <coughs> My point is, yeah. that's how you'll get your answer. I'll uh, I'll email Jesse and, and say I don't need anything from you now, but this is coming. Right. We are going to ask you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To have and help us right. organize so that we can effectively execute that. Okay. Yes. Um, we're still planning to have final report around the end of April. Is that the sort of? Ballpark. Well, that's why I'm going to put it in TSKP's court to, to give us some, some guidance. Um, and I'm just backing. Back I, I, I'm a it. little. I, I would love it if we were done by then. I'm yeah. I'm I'm going to express a little skepticism that we'll actually hit it, but it would be great to, to drive that direction. Just think of yeah. four weeks for them to do, two weeks to get the quote, a week to do right. We're getting near the red line for getting a second right. estimation if we're trying to get a report out. Okay. Um, oops, sorry, Kurt. What's, our, what's the rest of our to-do list for tonight, specifically? Um, we've actually touched on a, a lot of it because the next item was was next steps, and we've kind of talked about a, an approach for next steps. Um, I, unless people want to add more to that, I, I don't mind moving on, which would be to look at the budget. I don't think there's any invoices, but I could be wrong about No that. new invoices. The only change on this budget from the last one you saw was invoice number four from TSKP. Um, I guess one thing to talk about, maybe not tonight, is the items that are completely untouched. Uh, the second round of air quality testing, we never did. It was not part of our original town meeting charge. Um, and where we do not currently, where Jim's departure timing meant that the fall, it didn't happen in the fall. We have a new facilities director who doesn't appear to be joining us, uh, so I'm guessing that line item is probably just going to go back to the general fund when all is said and done. Um, but now that we are doing the independent cost estimator, that, that does mean that we've pretty much done everything we had originally planned on doing uh, at the outset. <coughs> any, any, if there's any questions on the budget, I'll, I'll take them. Heather. Kind of on the next steps and what you were just saying about the air quality testing, kind of, and, and what you were saying about one of the big questions that the community brought up at the, at the meeting was just this whole wet site. And um, I'm wondering if we have kind of left a resource unturned as far as information about, you know, we had a facilities director here who was great but hadn't had a long-term experience with the building um, and we have had teachers living in the Fort River building for 20 years more 30 30 you know and I I'm wondering if if it is incumbent upon this committee to, to use them as a better resource in, in finding out what you know we've got one report you know in a letter to the editor of the newspaper about an experience of having water seep up from the floor and you know it's hard to tell if that's a one-off or if that's a, a bigger thing and I mean I wish this is something I would have asked a year ago but sadly it's not something that that came up 
Um, but should we be asking the teachers in a real kind of much more methodol, you know, a, a, rig a rigorous way about can you tell us like what your experiences have been in the building as far as and we you know we other have the other piece of information, you know, the tell survey that come out and mm -hmm. says that you know only less than ten percent of the teachers in Fort River feel like it's a helpful environment for them to work in. You know, do we need to ex ask them questions about what is it? You know, and then, you know, is our approaches to renovating, we've got four schemes or however many that are renovating this building, and are we addressing those concerns in a renovation? And to me, that's like at the core of, is it feasible? Like if we can't address the concerns of the teachers who have worked in this building, or maybe these concerns don't exist, I don't know. This is something that, um, it, it, it did come up in the, uh, the public meeting last week. Um, we only, as you know, we only touched on it obliquely at our meeting, last meeting with TSKP, right. and we've just gotten back the geotechnical report. And I thought that at the public meeting, it's why I brought this up a little bit a moment ago, because I wanted to get it off my chest before we adjourned, <laughs> is that um, I, I didn't love the way that the, the <coughs> designer, the design team initially talked about it, because they were talking about it in a very conclusory fashion. And then once they were pushed by the audience, they said, oh, no, 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 no. I mean, I'm paraphrasing. Many, most of us were there. Um, no, 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 no. I get it. It's a wet site. But I'm telling you, I've worked on wet sites before, and there are ways of remediating them. And then once they did that, they started walking through specifically. Um, why, why, and actually, they even talked through, no, somebody in the audience talked through the fact that there was a reasonable basis to think that you could have a wet building even if you didn't have seepage into the building because the floor, there's no, yeah, there was a there's no insulated of barrier. Right. And so so you get a cold, you probably you know this stuff a million times better than I do, but you have a cold slab in the summertime and you have condensation. And so back when there were carpets, you could have easily gotten mold from the carpets, not because of any other reason than you got natural condensation right. on a wet floor in a hot summer. And that's why the great they tore the carpets. My point on that, though, is that the designers then answered that question, I thought, in a pretty good way about how they would respond to it. So what I heard from them was not actually a denial that people had negative experiences with the building, but also an answer of saying, given the site conditions, um, A, it does need to be remediated, B, it can be remediated, and C, here's how we do it. Um, they didn't, and they we, at D, we have a cost for D, it. We need to have, I, don't, we, I don't think we do yet. We don't have a cost yet. yet for it, but we need to get a cost for it. That's why I was bringing it up, is that what I didn't, to me, what we ended up with in that meeting was a conversation that illuminated, could illuminate public understanding. Yes, there's a problem. Yes, it can be remediated. Here's how. And that's a better, to me, that's a better place to be than doing what we've always done, which is, I mean, forgive me for saying this, but run on, on anecdotes, where one set of anecdotes is fighting against another set of anecdotes. Um, but my, po my point on it was that we haven't had that. I mean, you said this at the beginning, Jonathan. We hadn't had that conversation in this meeting. But also, we don't, this is to me the big thing, we don't yet know how they plan on incorporating this in the report as a narrative right. and, or a descriptive section. And it, as you say, you're, it's accurately, it's one of the crucial things that you have <coughs> described well and in a satisfactory way to, to the public. And I guess the suggestion for their surveys is what are the questions? I guess either the committee needs to come up with a list of questions or we need, like, as far as this wet stuff goes, like, specifically, what are the concerns that we have about it? You know, the condensation, the, you know, I feel like we've been kind of touching on it, but yeah. haven't really, like, got into the thick of it. We haven't. So I, I think the questions about how people would how the proposed designs address the concerns of the people that live in the building is a good one, but a quarter of this committee is supposed to be made up or supposed to be made up of, of people that work in the building every day. I, I would really hope that those members would, of the committee would, would address those concerns in the process that we have here in the, in the committee itself. 
So there's one. Well, there's one. one. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, and 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 whose whose value of cost benefit analysis weighs the most, right? So, how wh whatever the things in our column that we say are must, it, what what, who ranks the value of the benefits that you get out of mediating certain remediating certain aspects of the I mean, building, right? That's I mean, where that's where it gets really muddy for me. I, I wasn't. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, as far as going back to the people in the building, like. We have not been able to, to get a teacher on this committee in over a year now. Yeah. Um, the staff member position was vacant for a long time. That was only part. That was only partly because of lack of it. Like that was because yeah. of the government change and everything. But um, it, we've uh, of the of the three seats allotted to Fort River workers, uh, only one of them has really been consistently attended. And Heather, and then. Irina, did you have a hand? I just want to make sure I'm not missing anyone as I'm trying to write this. Hard so so you did, Eric. What? Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I did. Well, and I guess I feel like we've, we've done this in regard to a lot of other aspects. You know, like the, I mean, I think it was, there was a lot of consensus on the committee that open classrooms were a problem. Yes, we're addressing it. Daylight was a problem. Yes, we're addressing it. You know, but this whole water thing has been so much more, you know, not rigorously discussed or, or, or I guess I, I guess I feel like there has been disagreement on this committee about the extent of that particular issue and um, and I guess that's why I feel like maybe we needed to go beyond the committee to to get more input. I, I, I would I would urge the committee to go to set an agenda item with TSKP on going over the chair technical survey and its implications for um, the building concepts and the feasibility, yeah. as well as my. I'm going to plug this. And my point is, whatever you come up with, how are you planning on writing it up and explaining it to people? Um, because that's I think I I just think that in the I honestly think we're never going to get out of the box of of if people disagree about the site in town. We're not going to solve that disagreement by having more of those people talking to one another. We, we need to get professional advice, and that's what the entire point of this feasibility study was that we we're supposed to be getting good professional advice to give us feedback on the site. And, and I'm agreeing with you, we haven't talked about it, but this is the point. We, have, we literally haven't talked about it. So we need to get them in here, and we need to have this as an agenda item, and I think before we need to let them lay out what they've learned and go over the stuff and then and then push with them. And I think there it would be great to get. I mean I, I know he's on the committee, but make sure Ben shows up and if we can do it on a day where Ben and Mike both can. Because if we have Ben here and we have Mike, then we actually will have three people who've worked in Fort River um, present in the in the room. So we would actually be getting some of that feedback directly. Right. So right it, it's, it was my understanding that this was already in our plan. Right, we're having them. They're going to be yep. talking to us about this. We got the geotech a couple of days before the previous meeting. We're going to be talking about it. We're going to be talking about the survey, and they're going to be doing exactly what we need them to do. They're going to be rendering their professional opinion about what to do. So, I right. think we're there. Right. So, yeah, I think also I think I'd like to say professional advice. We had the environmental study. Um, so we have some information that it did study, that it did, did, that it did study. Okay, we didn't do the, the sprint, but we had it default. We compared it to other buildings at the same time. So one we have the same one at the same time. So we have a professional advice. I think my concern with the data is that building conditions change along the time. They, they were racks. Now they are not racks. The things change. They clean the vents. They don't clean the vents. Things change, and there are some many anecdotes. And I think I go for the scientific method. I think I want something systematic. If you want the environmental study, they came, they did probes, they did microbiology, they did a lot of studies. We have that point. It's unfortunate we didn't do it in the spring. Maybe it can be we give back the money to the town if they want to repeat it in the spring after we sunset. Oh, I think we did the spring. We did, the we did spring. We did spring. We, did spring. we, did spring. we didn't do it in the fall. We were, can supposed be, to, we were supposed to do two seasons. It's rather if than it, a yes. Year apart. They can do after we sunset if there are still more doubts can be repeated because we're giving back the money. We won't be there to do it. But I think, 
uh, environmental, but there were some big points on the environmental that we raised the flag, they said, okay, we, let's stop here because we have to address these issues. Um, well, I think it's perfectly reasonable for us to, to put this to TSKP and get them to, to give its, their professional opinion and, and to raise the issues that have been raised for, from the community and, and what we know from the reports and, and see if we as a committee feel satisfied by their, their answers. Eric, did we done? We can be done. <laughs> Thank if, you. Uh, if folks are done. <laughs> no, we've had a really productive meeting. Yeah. We've got a lot done. Let's cool over our head. <laughs> Um, so no invoices, so yes, we can entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Great. Second. In favor? <laughs>